Welcome to Movie Explained, your gateway to the movie ecosystem. In this video, I'm going to tell you about movie airdrops, which were done in 2023. I didn't fully understand what was going on back then. In retrospect, I was experiencing a life-changing moment. You mine Bitcoin by expanding electricity. You mine Mobik by sweating. Captain Ahab. Captain Ahab? Wasn't he the guy who spent his whole life trying to catch Moby Dick? That's right. Otemin, the creator of Mobik, has spent a decade going after Bitcoin whales. So I'll call him Captain Ahab. The first airdrop took place on a small mountain in the south of Seoul, the capital city of South Korea. Captain Ahab had announced on his YouTube channel several weeks before that he would give out Mobik to whoever reached the designated location on the mountain. I knew about it, but couldn't participate because I had to work even on Saturdays. The whole event was broadcast live via YouTube. Surprisingly, around 400 people climbed up the hill to receive then worthless paper wallets. Some parents sent their junior high sons instead, and some elderly parents hiked up for the adult sons and daughters. The number exceeded the project team's expectations, leading them to distribute empty wallets first and send the coins later. Roughly 20,000 Mobik were distributed that day, 50 each. Mobik was born. When Bitcoin crossed the $1 threshold, the history of Bitcoin truly began. Those 400 people showed their willingness to invest their time, money, and physical effort to obtain Mobik. In other words, they demonstrated that they would never sell their hard-earned Mobik at a nominal price. Captain Ayab knew that he had successfully reenacted what Satoshi Nakamoto accomplished over a decade ago. He didn't just create a cryptocurrency, he created real money that could freely cross borders. The second airdrop unfolded on a higher mountain in the middle of South Korea, a two-hour drive from Seoul. I was able to participate this time by taking a day off. For two days, around 2,000 people showed up at the mountaintop, enduring a grueling hike. They came from all walks of life, young, old, men, and women. Each person received 100 Mobik per day, totaling 200,000. The third airdrop was even more challenging. It took place on Jeju Island, a holiday destination right next to Japan. The participants had to be at different locations on three different days. So many people showed interest that the project team had to limit the number, asking for a paid flight ticket as a precondition for registration. Some people even tried to register their cats and dogs, only to fail. The weather was horrible on the first day. It rained heavily with strong gusts. But the project team proceeded nonetheless. Everyone was soaked and chilled, but they were relentless in obtaining their prized digital wallets. Despite the inclement weather, no accidents occurred. The real challenge came on the second day when Mobik wallets were distributed atop Mount Hala, the tallest mountain in South Korea. Fortunately, the skies miraculously cleared up in the morning, and 1,500 people started their ascent. The hike was no joke. I've never been more exhausted in the past 10 years. 
On the third day, movie was distributed to attendees of a paid lecture by Captain A. It was relatively easier, but the lecture was only available to those who had purchased tickets weeks before. Considering airfare, accommodation, meals, and rental car fees, the mining costs were far greater than the previous events. Even so, nobody complained because they knew it was worth it. Each person was able to receive 1500 during the three-day period. Approximately 2 million mobik went into the hands of ordinary folks. Similar coin distributions occurred in LA and Sydney, with an additional million mobik now scattered in the USA and Australia. I can't provide you with details because I wasn't brave enough to resign from my job and hop onto a flight. The last batch of wallets containing 1,000 mobi is now being traded around $50,000. All of this happened in just five months. Why? Bitcoin had to endure years of a tainted period. To reach the $1 mark, Bitcoin needed the support of ignorant junkies and drug dealers. It was impossible for Satoshi Nakamoto to evenly distribute Bitcoin because its very existence was questionable back then. Captain Ahab aimed to shorten that kind of abnormality. Since he knew that Mobik's future was already secure, he didn't have to repeat Bitcoin's dark past. Gold is considered a sound asset because nobody can get it significantly cheaper than the market price. Bitcoin is finally considered a valuable asset for the same reason. Now, uh, now that air jobs are over, Moby can put a short period of abnormality behind it. Its prices are now determined by the rules of supply and demand. In the next video, I'll explain why Mobig is being traded in the form of paper wallets. Stay tuned and stay excited. Mobig Probe out.